Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we can perform some advanced password hacking using Metasploit. No post exploitation of a Microsoft Windows machine would be complete without acquiring as much information about the Security Account Manager or the SAM database as possible. The Security Account Manager or the SAM is a database that is present on all computers running Windows operating systems that stores user accounts and security descriptors for users on the local computer. For this lab I will be using one virtual install of Kali Linux, one virtual install of Windows 7 Pro or Enterprise, and we will have an established MetaPredator session with our Windows 7 target. So let's quickly establish that MetaPredator session. And to do this, I'm going to find my work folder on my desktop. I'm going to right click on it. And from the context menu, I'm going to select Open Terminal here. I am now up inside of my working folder. And I have a script called handler underscore tcp.rc. I'm going to tell Metasploit that I want you to run this script when you start. So at the prompt, I've typed in MSF console space dash small letter R space the name of the script I would like it to run. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. We now have our listener established. So let's go on over to our Windows 7 machine and let's launch the payload.exe file. So over here on my Windows 7 machine, I'm just going to go to start. I'm going to go to computer. From here, I'm going to go into my documents. And there I have my payload.exe. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to run. And now when I go back on over to my Kali machine, you'll see that we do have a MetaPredator session waiting for us. Let's go ahead and set the MetaPredator session to the background. Let's go ahead and type in clear. Let's go ahead and load the bypass UAC exploit up inside of Metasploit. To do this, I've just typed in use space the name of the exploit. I'll go ahead and hit enter. We're going to need this to interact with session one, which is our MetaPredator session. So let's go ahead and tell it to work with session one. So at the prompt, I've typed in set space session one. Now this is going to allow this exploit to interact with our MetaPredator session. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now I can just type in the word run. And we're back to our MetaPredator prompt. Now if I type in get UID, you'll see who I am currently logged on as with our Windows 7 machine. Now if I type in get system, I should be able to elevate our privileges to that of administrator. And I did. Now if I go back and I type in get UID, you'll see that I am running as NT authority as part of the system. And we're now ready to continue on with the rest of the lab on how we go about using some advanced password hacking techniques with Metasploit. So let's start off with an oldie but a goodie. This is the hash dump command that comes with MetaPredator. And it's just a basic dump of the SAM database on our target machine. It's going to give us all the information about the users and their hashed passwords. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So currently you see that on my Windows 7 machine, I don't have a lot of users, but I've got an administrator. I got the guest account the IE user, I have the SSHD and the SSHD server account. Now these are all of the encrypted or hashed passwords, if you will, for the users that are currently residing on that Windows 7 target. So we pulled that over, but there's a lot more that we can do. This is just a basic hash dump. Hash dump reads directly from the memory of the target machine, pulling any information about user accounts and passwords from that memory. But we can also get the same information from the target's registry. Let's see how we do that. So the first thing we need to do, again, is background our MetaPredator session. Be sure to take note of the session ID that has been assigned to this MetaPredator session. Let's go ahead and clear our prompt. 
Now at the prompt, I'm going to change module. So we're going to be using the post Windows Gather Hash Dump exploit. Now I have to tell it to interact with that session ID that we just created. To allow this new exploit to interact with our MetaPredator session, I've typed in set space session followed by the session ID, which in this case is the numeral 2. I'm going to hit enter and I'll type in the run command. Now this exploit will also look for password hints and on our target we currently don't have any. But that's another key difference between this exploit and then just using the hash dump command. Now let's return to our MetaPredator prompt. Now to do this I've typed in at the prompt sessions space dash i space the numeral 2. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and notice we come back to our MetaPredator prompt. In Metasploit we can use an extension called incognito to allow us to perform token stealing and manipulation activities. In the previous escalation stage of a penetration test, if we can steal the token of an administrator, we can perform higher privilege operations on that target. So in this example, let's imagine we have successfully exploited a remote system and we have a MetaPredator session. We first need to load the MetaPredator extension for Igtognito. So at my prompt, I have typed in load space Igtognito. Go ahead and hit enter and the extension is loaded. To identify any valid tokens on the target machine, we can use the list underscore token space dash u command. The dash u lists tokens using their unique username. So at my MetaPredator prompt, I have typed in list underscore token space dash small letter u. Go ahead and hit enter. And it comes right back showing us all of the user tokens that are currently available on our Windows 7 target. Now before you impersonate any user token that you find on a target machine, make sure that it has at least some level of administrative access that will allow you to come back in using a system token when you're through. Using a simple user account and then impersonating that user account will stop you from being able to come back in because you will not have those administrative privileges that you need to assume the system privileges. Now you can see from the results that we have a token that is called sshd underscore server. Now I happen to know that this particular account is a member of the administrators group on the target machine. One of the known issues with MetaPredator is that there is a problem with using a single backslash. You have to separate the name of the machine or the name of the domain from the user account using two backslashes. So let's see how we do that. So at my prompt, I have typed in impersonate underscore token space. Now I have to give it the identity of that user token that I want to impersonate. In this example, I'm going to impersonate the sshd underscore server. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and it says delegation token available. Successfully impersonated the user. And it gives me the name of the machine. Then it comes back with a forward slash giving me the name of the user token that I impersonated. And we can verify this just by using the get UID command. You'll see that I am now logged on as the sshd underscore server. A system account is always going to be more powerful than most administrator accounts. So let's go ahead and get back our NT authority backslash system account. And to do that, I'm just going to type in get system. The next tool we're going to look at is Mimikatz. Now, Metasploit has two versions of Mimikatz available using the MetaPredator shell. There's version 1.0, and we get that just by loading the Mimikatz extension. And there is the newer version 2.x that we get by loading the Kiwi extension. So in this lab, we will be loading the Kiwi extension. Now to do this, I'm just going to type in load Kiwi. So at my prompt, I have typed in load Kiwi. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. Now to pull over any Kerberos credentials, 
that may be present on our target machine, we can type in the following command. I can type in creds underscore Kerberos. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see it pulls over all of the usernames, the domain, and any password that would be related to that domain. Now, since we're not running a domain per se, all of our passwords are going to be null because we don't have any Kerberos connectivity. But what we do have is landman and NT landman hashes available for us over on the target machine. And we can pull those over using the creds underscore msv command. So at the prompt, I've typed in creds underscore msv. I'm going to hit enter. And we now have the NT landman credentials. So what makes Mimikatz so effective as an attack tool is the ability to retrieve clear text passwords. So after a user logs on, credentials are stored in memory by the local security authority subsystem service LSASS process. Now using Mimikatz, we can retrieve the passwords as clear text credentials. Let's see how we do that. So at the prompt, I've typed in creds underscore w digest. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And by accessing the memory on our target machine, Mimikatz was able to pull the clear text passwords and present them to us. Now when we're running the Kiwi version of Mimikatz, we're just getting a subset of most of the features. Now to get the extended version or to see all of the features, we can use another command. So I would like to have the extended version of the commands available up inside of Mimikatz. So I've typed in Kiwi underscore CMD space version. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now the extended version of Mimikatz also comes with a very useful module called Securalsa. Now this is going to allow us to look at all the logon passwords, but we're going to pull down a lot more useful information with these passwords. So let's see how we do that. So at my prompt, I've typed in Kiwi underscore CMD space Securalsa space two double colons space logon passwords. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now you'll see that all those user accounts that we have on the target machine have a lot of additional information that's being presented to us. So running the Securalsa module up inside of my Metapreter brings back a lot more information about the user accounts and their passwords. So you can see a lot of good information here that you could use to either decipher or to use because we get both the hashes and we get the clear text passwords if that they are available. And so in this short video presentation, we got to take a look at some of the advanced password hacking capability of Metasploit. So if you got any questions, you got any concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.